Welcome back, welcome back to our channel. We are the Amazon. Welcome back, welcome back to our channel. We are the Amazon. I'm out of breath. I'm a human today. Hello, everyone. Hello everybody. Welcome back to our Welcome channel. Welcome back. Good to see you all. Good to see you guys. We are happy to be back. Glad to be here. And thank you for your congratula congratulation messages. Is that proper English? You are saying for? <laughs> yeah, I remember now. <laughs> God for She's you. still excited. <laughs> How can you say for? <laughs> I'm not saying for like... <laughs> If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to our last video. This man did it. Hey. From driving an envelope to driving a car without airbags to driving different, different small cars and finally to a Jeep <coughs> Patriot. And now... Hey. The grand finale. My God. While I wait for the 2022 one, people will think I'm ungrateful. Guys, I, I am so excited about it. And this man, I've been thanking him back to back. I've been saying thank you. Am I lying? Haven't felt it. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> it's okay. Let's, let's not go deeper. <laughs> Well. All right, guys, thank you for joining. To those who subscribed recently, we love you guys. We're excited to have you and to our old Sabi. You're welcome. Welcome, everybody. Yay. And today, yes. as you know, that we have stories, juicy, juicy stories. And you guys like stories. You like. We are relating. We like when you give us stories. We have another one today, very exciting. But it was not exciting when it happened. So, as you have seen from Far the from title, exciting. <laughs> we had a very, you know, when you talk about heated, uh, they call it what? Heated uh, conversation or heated what? Conversation? That was not a conversation, it was a heated moment. It was a heated conversation. It, it was a, <laughs> a heated conversation. It was really heated. So I've spoken about our miscarriage. If you have not watched that, please go and check it out in one of our videos. I was alone. And today we are here to talk about what really happened on that day when we found out that our baby don't japa. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we are here to encourage someone out there who might be going through a miscarriage right now. We are laughing about it now because God has been faithful. God gave us double, you know. We, Amen. We now have two boys and we look back we're like, why did we even have that heated uh, conversation? Why did we even cry like that, you know? If you knew what God is about to do in your life, you just laugh at whatever situation that you are faced with. So we are here today. That's why I said, don't jump out. I'm making a joke out of it because God has blessed us. Uh, his promises are true. He is always faithful. So yeah, we, 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 I'm not going to go back to the story. I'm just going to talk about that particular day. Uh, but in summary, for those who did not see the video, that morning when we made an appointment to go and see a doctor, uh, because I've been bleeding, and the doctor that we went to said it's normal. So people were telling us, no, it's not normal. You've been bleeding for almost two weeks, so I can't even remember. And that morning now, we, we made an appointment. It was on Sunday when they told us that, no, this thing is not normal. So we were now feeling like, oh no oh no and then we made an appointment for monday with this other gynecologist he called us in the morning that he can't see us anymore and we're already like no we need help like now so we called one of our doctor friends we went to him everybody was quiet okay because we i think i think we knew 
already that okay this is it this is a miscarriage because of the way people were talking and also now we were now like no this cannot be normal you know so we were quiet we got to the doctor's office and <laughs> he checked me he said i was going to drink two liters of water <laughs> <laughs> So that we can see, hey God. so we can see with spiritual lens. He said, I must drink two liters. He said, my bladder needs to be full so that he can see my womb properly. Imagine, we went out. <laughs> we may we go through things in this life. <laughs> we not my husband know he was active. We drove out. All this while, this man was quiet, very quiet. In the spirit. My husband is not a quiet person. That day he was very quiet. I only heard him talk when he bought water, baby drink. <laughs> <laughs> Following the doctor's instructions. <laughs> Guys, <Hey>. I drank. <laughs> and I'm looking at that two liters. I'm like, are you for real? How do I drink that? Guys, my husband was on my case. Drink the water will clean up baby the lens. Drink. I don't know whether you felt like if I drink the baby will not appear. Like <laughs> they said, drink water so that I so drank, can see drank, drank. I couldn't finish the whole bottle. We went yeah. back. I said, No, baby, no. I think my, my <laughs> I'm even feeling my blood guys. <laughs> Let's go back. So we went back. Mm. Everyone at the moment was quiet. So the doctor checked. Till today, we didn't. We did not even see anything. To I me. saw. What you didn't see, but I saw. I saw. I <laughs> saw. What? Continue. I'll tell you what I saw. <laughs> so he was like, "Ah oh, no, I'm sorry, Fetty. Sorry, eh? he's, he's Nigerian. Sorry, eh? No, try again. I'm sorry. There's nothing there. So we were quiet. So like." There was nothing there I saw from the sack. Was it yeah, that was empty and there was no baby there. And at first when we went for the first Even at that check out, I, I saw the baby, I could see the you know, the little thing that So the baby was born after I drank the water. No no no. Huh? The baby wasn't gone. The baby had gone where the blood was flowing. <laughs> when did you see the baby? We went to the first doctor. Oh, okay. On the scan, I could see that you know. The little dot. And at this this point now, I didn't see the, I didn't see yeah. it, so I could tell that there was nothing there anymore. I thought you said you saw the baby before I drank the water. No. Then the water now <laughs> what removed the baby completely. No. What are you saying? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so we 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 walked out. This is where the problem started, okay? Because as a wife, I'm thinking this man will hold me. In fact, carry me. So I did. I held you. Hey, Jesus. I held you, yes. My husband, no. What happened? You know when something like that has happened, you expect your husband to just carry you, you know? I thought he would carry me from that bed, take me to the car, and... It's okay, love. It's okay, you'll be fine. Don't worry. You'll be fine, my this baby. This will pass. You know, and... <laughs> thinking which, that I'm married which, to a pastor. Which I did. When that happened, oh I, ca I held oh you. I said, baby, this will pass. We're going to have babies. God has given us babies. We're gonna when have did babies. you say that? In the, right. office yes. or in the car? In the car. Hmm. In the car. I told you that in the car. I, so can no. I told so you. So why oh, did you now no. have that argument if you told me? Tell me the it argument. Makes, it makes me I'm I'm not normal. Because at that point your ears were blocked. <laughs> <laughs> the, the moment you heard the baby was, was no more here, you were gone. Guys, you were this somewhere. Is what I you were somewhere else. This man kept quiet. No. Maybe way. you said it's okay, but you didn't talk up to. The I, way I want to. We sat in the to... car. I said, baby, don't stress the about it. The only this. thing I remember you saying don't was. Don't even worry about it. We're going to have don't babies. Don't call anyone. This... Oh, boy. That's what he said. That was the final. He um... said, don't call anyone. Okay. I listened. We drove. If you're in Pretoria, 
we drove from Atrechville to somewhere next to Maravastat. You can imagine the distance. Second thing, number one, <laughs> the first offense that I had was that he did not talk to me, right? He just told me, don't call anyone. Fine. From there, this man, guess where he went to? His workshop. To check his cards. No, it doesn't sound right. We left the doctor's office. <laughs> you know what I say? I spoke to you. Number. I spoke to you nicely in the car. Then we began to drive. And the car was quiet. We are driven, say, five to seven kilometers when the guys who work with me called me and said, I have to come quickly and, you know, help them do a few things. Then we leave. So, so I told her, call, be please, can I go through this place and quickly get you told me. Dog? No, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I did, I did. No. There's no way. So are you saying I was just driving and they called me and like, okay, go. You just I went there, baby. You didn't tell me you wanted to go. No there. way. Sugar pie. I told you, like I said briefly, just quickly. That's what I said. Maybe my ears were blocked. Yes, they were. So we drove mm -hmm. and then I got to the, the shop. I went to the guys. I did spend up to five minutes or some two or three minutes and I was done. And then I was coming back to the car. And while coming back into the car, what I heard was the sound of a train running through a tunnel. <laughs> Someone was crying for real. So guys. I never <laughs> heard that before. This man, <laughs> he now drove to his workshop, right? Yeah. He got there. So when he's there, I'm thinking, does he even know I just lost a baby? And he is thinking of his businesses. He's not even thinking about me. He has not even said a word. Like, from that moment, I said, you know what? I'm calling my mom. The person who understands. The person who loves me. You see. The person who cares about you see. me. The person who will understand my pain. You see now. And he told me, don't call anyone. You see. So as I took the phone, my mom said, An hello. instruction of the spirit. Just <laughs> obey. My mom said, hello, says, I said, mama. <laughs> mama. <laughs> <laughs> and we screaming. You wanted to kill that woman for nothing. <laughs> he came to the car. What is going on here? And I'm still on the phone with my mom. My mom is like, what is going on? <laughs> right now i had to cut the call he entered the car guys he started driving ah i told you don't listen i said do you know what i'm going through i just lost the baby he uh -huh. said do you know you lost the baby uh -huh. guys it was a mess <laughs> she lost the baby i didn't lose the baby i said i lost the baby yeah, okay 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 we argued about that losing that baby oh till we got home Going, getting home, he was now fed up, like he was done. He just dropped me. Me too, I'm like, just go, just go. You don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and then as he was driving out, when he reached the gate, what happened? The Holy Spirit arrested you. <laughs> Put my hands in handcuffs. Handcuffs. <laughs> You said you said you want to marry. <laughs> Go, Go back. back. <laughs> <laughs> no one forced you to marry. <laughs> you chose by yourself. He you now came back, and when he drove, when I heard the car, that's when I cried. I said, "This guy does not love me." <laughs> By crying, please. I was just there screaming. Then all of a sudden, in fact, when you were coming back, you were calm. You didn't even want me to hear that you were coming. <laughs> you were embarrassed. The Holy Ghost had watched me. Glory to God. And then he came back, he held me. Then I cried even more. You see now, look, look at a sweet husband. Sweet husband there. I clap for myself. <laughs> <laughs> this just is sweet. <laughs> 
<laughs> you like it? <laughs> so he came back. So he came back, he held me, and then did you cry? No. Will you say if you cried? I would have said, I mean, I would say if I, if I cried. Did, I didn't cry. No ways. You cried like a man. No, I didn't Even cry. now, see your eyes, you want to cry. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> No, I didn't cry. So, um, y'all, yeah, we cried together. No, <laughs> I consoled you while you were crying. Then he did what he was supposed to do. At first. From that doctor's office. Oh, my. So, but guys, <laughs> jokes aside, there were lessons that we learned from that whole um, experience, experience. You know, For me, the number one lesson that I learned was that uh, I was not the only person who lost the baby. I was selfish thinking that he doesn't understand my pain, not thinking about him. And you know what the funny thing is? You were the one who wanted the baby. I was always like, I'm not ready for a baby. I'm not ready for a baby. You and then <laughs> we found out we were pregnant. We busy, Nana. We found out that we were pregnant and I'm ready for a baby. I was like, I'm not ready. And it was not. Well. <laughs> And now I'm there thinking, I lost the baby by myself, you know, which was very selfish of me. And see, the Holy Spirit is speaking through you now. He's, I used, learned he's using you for the first time. This lessons, long time. This thing happened 2019, baby. <laughs> so yeah, that was number one. That I was not the only person who lost the baby, but both of us. Yes. The thing is that you know. She was grieving in her own way, mm -hmm. and I was grieving in my own way. Yeah. But now, probably she thought I was supposed to be crying and rolling on the floor and holding her, <laughs> but I was just quiet. You know, I didn't say a word. I was just quiet. Which is um, I was dealing with it. Another lesson that we we different. You are a man. I'm a woman. We are very emotional, so we deal with pain differently from you guys Amen. which i also feel like is something for you as a man to learn that okay my wife is emotional at this point she needs me well the point is i knew that i mean you're going to end up having the outburst but i thought to curtail it as i said don't call anybody don't call your mother don't call nobody mm -hmm. let's get home first mm -hmm. then i'll do the calling but instead of her waiting for me to do the calling because I went to the shop for two minutes or three minutes. She decided to make a call. And then there was an explosion. Which is a lesson again that when when something like this happened, like there's a oh when someone is emotionally broken, you need to prioritize your partner. What do you mean prioritize your partner? You, you can't, you can't put business. It, when they called you, you should have told them that, see, I can't come now. I have a crisis <laughs> that I need to take care of, so I cannot be there. Just make a plan. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And give time to me. True that. True that. And to true, that, true that. True that. True that. True that. And the next lesson? The next lesson is that I was not as broken as she was. <laughs> what about lesson? Yeah, I wasn't as broken as you were. Because I had a word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. I had been in prayer, and while I was praying early in the year, this happened when this happened in March, right? Mm -hmm. Most Januarys, when the year start, I always there's a park by our house. It's you know it's mountainous, and you know, people you can walk around it for about two or three hours. Mm -hmm. So I usually go there and spend you know days praying. So while I was there praying, the Lord spoke to me and said, "I'll give you a son." So once I heard that, I knew that you, I was going to have a boy coming. So when that happened, even though it was not a nice experience, it was painful, but I knew what God had told me. Mm -hmm. I was sure about it. Just like I've been sure about many things God told me that has come to pass. I knew that what God said was true and it was going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, it was painful, but not as painful, you know, for me because... I knew that we we're still going to have a boy, we we're still going to have a son, we we're still going to have children because that's what the Lord had told me. Mm -hmm. So my encouragement to someone out there today is this, hear God, mm -hmm. hear God in the midst of your storm, hear God. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, 
if you have a good walk with the Lord, before any storm arise, you have heard him already mm -hmm. and be sure of what to do. The last lesson for me would be listening. Obedience is better than sacrifice. If I listened when he told me not to call anyone, I would not have been in that mess actually. Because it was from me calling my mom um, that I started screaming and that's what he was avoiding. He wanted, he told me later that his plan was that we would go home and he would talk to me nicely and then he would now talk to everybody else. But I did not listen. I felt like he doesn't understand, you know. And I think it's something that we should learn as women. It happens a lot in our marriage. Like my husband will tell me, don't do that. And then in my head I'm thinking, why? Why? <laughs> Sometimes I'll even ask why. And then for him it's like, can you just listen? Let me, when I tell you don't do it, just listen and then you'll get the wisdom later. So it's actually a very important lesson to learn as a wife to listen to our husbands, to avoid complications and yeah. unnecessary arguments. Yeah. My encouragement to every one of us is that, Jay, come on. My encouragement to every one of us is have a solid fellowship with God. Be able to hear God for yourself. Because you see, your stability in a time or in the time of crisis is what you heard God say to you. The word you have received from God becomes the basis of your confidence. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 1, it says, now faith is the substance of things. Okay, the word substance is the Greek word hypostasis. It means the basis for confidence. So that word you have received from God becomes what you rely, depend, and trust in. And that word will bring you through so that when what you see doesn't line up with what you heard, you are able to tell, no, 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 no. That's not what God said. I choose to believe what he said. His report is what I believe. And his word is the final authority in my life. And I believe his word is settled forever. So even when the baby was no longer there, I knew I'll still be a father. I knew I'll still have children because the Lord said, I, I didn't go to pray about babies. But while I was praying for the year, praying for the church, praying for the people, then he said, you're going to have a son. So if he said it, he will do it. What happened? The same year we conceived and had a baby, the January of the next year. Um, so God brought his word to pass. And then the same thing happened with the second child. My wife had taken in. I didn't have an idea. I was in my room praying. And while I was praying, I slept off. Now I'm being awoken from sleep. It was like someone appeared to me. It was an angel of the Lord. He said to me, your wife is pregnant with a son. Whoa. And we had the second one. So I want to encourage you all, you know, when you go through hard times or before hard times, it's better. Get yourself in the word of God. But if you're going through a hard time right now, rather than focusing on the things you're going through, get your eyes, get your mind, get your soul fixed on Jesus. Spend time with him and get a word. That word will bring you out. You can't have God's word and sing. Mm -hmm. Peter said, if it is you, Lord, bid me come. He said, come. Mm -hmm. And on the basis of the word Jesus spoke, Peter was able to walk on water. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter the circumstance or the situation. Mm -hmm. If you have a word from God, you will walk on water. Mm -hmm. If you have a word from God, the impossible will become possible. If you have a word from God, that which seems so hard, tough and unbelievable will be turned around for your good and you will definitely have a testimony. Glory to God. Before we close tonight, can we pray for anybody out there going through any form of difficulty, financial, material, marriage, relationship, or a lady out there who has lost a baby, who have lost babies and trusting God for the fruit of the womb again and that the baby will stay and be born. I pray for you by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
that circumstance meets the power of God right now and it turns for your good in the name of Jesus Christ. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, they were like them that dream dreams and their mouth was filled with laughter. They say they are among the hidden. The Lord has done great things for them whereof they are glad. We prophesy to you today, the Lord has done it and now you receive it and it shall be said of you, the Lord has done great things for him. The Lord has done great things for her. You will carry your miracle baby. You will hold your miracle job. You will have your miracle business in the name of Jesus Christ. And the word that God has given you will come to pass in your life. In Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We have an announcement. It's our anniversary on the 10th of November. Go ready. And we decided to give you content four days. Is that correct? Yeah. In four days. So we are going to upload a video on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Back to back. That's a buffer. That's our gift. That's a buffer. To you. <laughs> Just the pain for us. <laughs> yeah, and we have all the time. Yes, but we want to try and do that. We'll be good. We'll be talking about four different things that we have learned in the four years of being married Hallelujah. to this man. Mm. So please just click on that notification button so you don't miss out on this exciting series. Hope to see you there. All right. Thank love you guys. You all. We love you. Ciao. Ciao.